Okay, so this next video lecture is about the audits of financial statements that have been previously audited. Okay, so here, if the auditor is asked to audit and report on FS that have been previously audited and reported on, so this case is what we refer to as re-audit, meaning to say uh, the audit uh, procedure will be performed again but with, with, this, the, with a different auditor or now the successor auditor. So the auditor considering acceptance of this free audit engagement is also uh, referred to as the successor auditor. And the auditor who previously audit, audited or reported on uh, the previous FS is also known as the predecessor auditor okay so the successor auditor should state that the purpose of his inquiries okay to in to obtain information about whether to accept an engagement to perform a the audit this time so he should inform the predecessor auditor the reason why he needs to inquire data or information from him so what is his purpose this is to the audit okay that the fs that has been audited before so if the successor auditor accepts the re audit engagement so he may consider the information obtained from uh, the inquiries okay from the predecessor auditor uh, he can also review the report and working papers and consider it in planning the re audit okay so this is how information gathered will be used by the successor auditor okay however the information obtained from those inquiries and review of the report and working papers is not sufficient to afford a basis for expressing an opinion so again just like in the previous video lecture about the use of the communication um the information from the predecessor auditor is not the only and cannot be the basis uh, to be used as audit evidence in expressing the successor auditor's opinion. So he should gather still audit evidence, even in the case of the audit engagement. Okay, so the nature, timing, and extent of the audit work that will be performed and the conclusions that will be reached in the re-audit are these are solely the responsibility now of the successor auditor because he is the one who will perform the re-audit again he cannot use uh, the information taken from the predecessor auditor in expressing his opinion and any uh, thing especially the opinion will be the sole responsibility now of the successor auditor okay so the, the successor auditor should plan and perform the re-audit with or in accordance with GAAP and PSA. So the successor auditor should also not assume responsibility for those work or issues uh, reported by the predecessor auditor or they cannot divide the responsibility. So now it is the responsibility of the successor auditor. That's why he should gather sufficient and appropriate appropriate audit evidence to support his opinion. So furthermore, the the predecessor auditor is not a specialist, nor he his work constitute the work of others. So again, um, meaning to say, the successor auditor can. Uh, inquire of the information but he should not consider this as the sole audit evidence he should gather his evidence uh, as well because he is now performing the re-audit engagement so if the successor auditor has audited the current period the results of that audit may be considered in planning and performing also the re-audit of the previews of the preceding period or periods and may have and may provide evidential matter that is useful also in uh, 
the re-audit. Okay. So here, um, any results will, or this can help or aid the successor auditor, especially in planning and even the performance of the re-audit. But again, this cannot be the basis for his opinion. So if I re-audit or if in a re-audit engagement, the successor auditor is unable to obtain uh, sufficient and appropriate audit evidence to express an opinion about the FS. So in this case, there might be some limitation that have existed. So the auditor can qualify or disclaim his opinion because of these uh, limitations. Okay. So, here, qualify meaning um, there might be a part of, or portion of the financial statements which are materially misstated. Or he can disclaim his opinion because there is not enough audit evidence that can support his opinion. So, he cannot express an opinion. So, this is disclaimer of opinion. Okay, so the reason again is his inability to perform the procedures. Okay, that are necessary. So these are the instances where the successor auditor can modify or disclaim his opinion. Okay, so next, uh, the successor auditor should also request working papers for the period or periods under the audit. Okay, and the period prior to the re-audit period. So he can have some... Uh, reference or I mean he can have some uh, information okay that he can use in the planning and in the performance of the re-audit engagement so however the extent if any to which the predecessor auditor permits access again of the working paper is a matter of judgment so just like uh, what we have discussed before in our previous video lecture so, the predecessor auditor would assess whether uh, what types or what um, working papers will be disclosed that he may think are relevant to the successor auditor's um, understanding of the entity and the results of the prior audit. Okay, so here, in a re-audit, the successor auditor... Uh, generally will be unable to observe inventory or he can or can make a uh, physical count at the re-audit dates because probably it has uh, now started its new uh, accounting period or there has been so many transactions that have already occurred where um, it's almost uh, complicated to determine okay, the inventory at the end of the period for the re-audit purposes. So in such cases, the successor auditor may consider the knowledge obtained from his review of the prede predecessor auditor's working papers and even inquire of the information related to those transactions or accounts okay, from the predecessor auditor to determine the nature, timing, and extent of procedures that he will apply in the circumstances okay so that would should also be considered because of the time uh, difference and difficulty okay, on the part of the successor auditor so the successor auditor performing the re-audit should also uh, if material observe or perform some physical counting of the inventory at the date subsequent to the period of re-audit so, in connection with the current audit or otherwise, and apply appropriate tests of intervening transactions. So, again, it's like uh, auditing for the first time, okay, although he is uh, conducting a re-audit. So, this is just to uh, justify or determine the accurateness and correctness of the account balances. Okay, so um, appropriate procedures may include tests of prior transactions, reviews of records of uh, prior counts, 
and even the application of analytical procedures such as gross profit test. So here, this is how the successor auditor should do in a re-audit engagement. Okay, so this is all for the successor's um, auditor use of communication in performing the re-audit engagement.